right, a little bit of show and tell here. In the uh, late 80s, 1987 to 89, I believe, I worked for a company called The Steels People. And uh, they were a uh, pretty large Toronto based kind of warehouse style computer retailer. Prior to becoming the Steels people, they were called uh, International Computer Clearance Warehouse, ICCW. And uh, at that time, they were a, a real bulk kind of area, huge um, shelves just full of computers and software and modems and, and uh, add-on cards and everything else. This is really one of the few things I have... Uh, left from that period. They had their own little branded diskettes here. I can't remember who made these. But as you can see, it's a double-sided, double-density, which is awesome. Technically, it's double-sided, but you'd have to notch out the uh, chummy if you wanted to get that. And uh, double-density being this uh, basically 360k per side. I love the lifetime warranty there. I'm not sure where you would ever uh, return it to, because the company's long gone. But, uh, you know, thing of beauty. Yeah. Um, I tore the label off of this. I believe it had uh, PFS rate on it, which is a very popular uh, word processor in the 80s, 90s. And, uh, yeah, I really like this uh, company. I'm going to do other videos more specific to uh, my time there, just to... Uh, I've been trying to find people that work there. I, I do have a buddy who uh, worked for this company right up until the end in Ottawa, and uh, so I've been picking his brain a little bit, but I'm really interested to uh, write and, uh, you know, maybe do a piece about the company itself. I did write a letter, actually, to uh, Barry Krakauer, who is uh, one of the principal owners of the company back in the day, he and his brother. Um, started the company and uh, I have not heard back from him but I really would uh, like to interview him at one point I'm just uh, I was keen on the whole uh, retail concept of, the, of this company my dad and I used to go to this company long before I ever worked there um, every time I would be at his house for a visit in the summertime or whatever we'd uh, take a trip over there and see what they had on the go and dad was just getting into computers at the time as well so he had uh, stuff to get, and I was buying Commodore 64 software at the time, so... Anyway, yeah, that's uh, Steel's people. Now, one of the things we used to sell a lot of there was hard drives like this. This is a Seagate ST251-1. Very popular hard drive. Expensive in its day. I think this formats out to about 42 megabytes. I believe. Um, you can see the uh, errors. In the old days you actually had to manually insert those numbers so that the drive would not attempt to write to those areas. Um, later on the errors were stored on the disk itself and you didn't have to enter them, but this one would have been uh, manual. It's an old school MFM type connections there, which uh, stands for the Modified Frequency Modulation, which is, uh, well, like it says, uh, it's a modified version of just general frequency uh, modulation, but uh, it allowed for at least two times greater uh, data bit storage at the time. Got a uh, data cable and a control cable. The jumper here for setting the uh, drive number and or there's a test routine and all that sort of good stuff. There's the bottom of the spindle motor which does the turning of the discs. And there be the uh, stepper motor which operates the uh, the uh, head mechanism. Uh, the technology that spawned this uh, I think it was made in the early 70s, and uh, and it was also used for uh, floppy drive encoding. Like even the uh, the controller that would have written to this would be using a uh, similar form of MFM. 
there was an offshoot of uh, MFM called RLL, Run Length Limited, uh, which had a different encoding method and would basically add 50% uh, to the capacity of this drive. When I later uh, left the Steels people, I went to a company called uh, Computer Brokers of Canada. Uh, they were Canada's biggest, as far as I know, uh, well before, I think Ingram bought them out or something, but well before some of those large uh, computer distribution companies we have now. And they were the largest uh, sellers of hard, uh, hard disks like uh, Seagate, Miniscribe, um, Rodine, and a couple others. Um, we used to do experiments with running these drives built for MFM, running them in RLL, and testing their reliability over long periods of time. And uh, they did surprisingly well. We couldn't really detect that there was any downside. Um, it was thought that if the drive was not certified running on an RLL controller, that uh, you know you might board the warranty or reliability would go down, but uh, we did not experience that. Um, an official RLL version of this would be ST251R, and that's one where the company had you know, certified it for, so this would have been a 60 megabyte drive-ish, 60, 62 megabytes, uh, running under an RLL scheme. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people did that. A lot of people came into the store and, uh, you know, said, hey, I want to run, I want more capacity, and can you hook it up to an RLL? And if, if we thought it would work, we would do it. Uh, maybe at owner's risk, since it's uh, them asking for it, but uh, never really... Um, not too many downsides, really. It, it, it uh, I suppose it's possible a few drives failed as a result of that, but uh, we didn't witness it. This is a uh, five and a quarter inch platter. It would be very similar to this. You know, the size of the disc is very, very well. It's identical, and there's multiple platters in here. I think there is, how many discs are in this? I think there's three. And there would be a head on either side of each disc, so this would have six heads on it. Back in the day when you installed this in a computer, you'd have to low-level format it using a, a debug routine that you would execute um, a program that was on the controller that ran this. And it would low-level format the drive. That quite often took an hour or two. And uh, then you would format it with whatever operating system uh, uh, you had, whether, well, MS-DOS is all that we did, but it could be CPM or uh, some other. And uh, yeah, this was a super popular drive. This one was quite a bit faster seek time than um, quite a few of the others. I think it's the Dash 1 moniker that had it, uh, I forget what the... Uh, forget what the max seek time was, or even the latency, uh, but it, it was much faster than uh, other drives at the time. Typically when you formatted these, you'd have to format them uh, with an offset, so um, you wouldn't get a one-to-one -one, um, data pattern reading off the head. The, the head wasn't capable of either stepping into the right place quickly enough or necessarily seeking and reading quickly enough. So uh, sometimes it was kind of a, a three to one um, offset that you would uh, format these with so that uh, um, it could more efficiently um, read the data. This is 3600 RPM, I believe, back in the day. There really wasn't anything faster. It's about as quickly as they wanted to go with this encoding format. Um, this format is long gone. There's, I don't even think modern drives don't even share uh, a similar concept. Really, I mean, now they you know can stack bits vertically, and you know data densities they're absolutely insane. It'd be hard to guess with modern encoding techniques and three disks and six heads, how many terabytes you could actually store on this these days. I mean, hundreds probably. That's just the, you know, the way they've got everything uh, compacted. But anyway, yeah, this is a super popular, uh, super popular.
super popular brand. See if there's a date on it somewhere. Oh, assembled in Thailand. There you go. Got some OC stickers and stuff, but I don't see a date on that one either. Oh, there you go. It doesn't seem right, but that'd be the 41st week of 93. I suppose it's possible. Um, yeah. Up here, oh, I guess the it's the board that's assembled in Singapore. Focus. Assembled in Singapore, and uh, it's the motor assembly, I guess it was assembled in Thailand. Anyway, yeah, I guess if that stamp is to be trusted, then this is from 1993, 41st week. Um, I thought probably by then these would be done, but gone on to the uh, three and a half inch discs, or uh, you know, gone into the uh, IDE interface and thrown away this thing. I will fire this up at one point, uh, perhaps not today. I don't have my power supply around, but uh, that will be something coming up. Anyway, that's it for the 80s and 90s tech of today. Thanks for watching.